Hey, what's up everybody? Today, I'm gonna be helping you get through the first 30 days of the 75 hard challenge. Those are the days where most people end up running into some sort of mental roadblock or sometimes physical roadblock and getting out and quitting the challenge. My goal here is to help you not do that. I wanna see you hit day 75. So we're gonna talk about how to survive the first 30 days. Do me a favor though, if you find this video to be helpful, please hit like on it, maybe the subscribe because I do these types of videos and other health and fitness videos several times a week. So the first 30 days, especially those first two weeks are quite a bit of chaos because you're dealing with two different emotions at the same time. One is you're excited, you're purpose-driven, you're, you have a destiny in front of you. You can see day 75, you can see yourself celebrating on day 75. But you also very quickly will run into this other feeling of like, wow, this is a lot that I have to do every day. And those two things combined, the weight of the restrictions and the requirements, plus the excitement can cause this weird ball of like, I can't, this is too much. It's just all too much. And so that's kind of natural on those first couple of days. But here's what's going to start to happen to you. Every day that you go through this challenge, those first couple of weeks, you start to develop these habits and these routines that by the time that you hit the end of like week one, you're a little bit better at doing this challenge than you were on day one. And by the time you hit the end of your second week, you've really started to put some of these puzzle pieces together. You're taking the picture pretty much at the same time every day. Your diet's really kind of started to get hammered out. Your workouts have started to fall in line and you know when you're gonna be able to do those things. And so those habits, those routines make this challenge more doable and gives you a much higher likelihood of actually getting to the 75th day. So those feelings at the beginning are 100% natural. But as you go through the challenge every single day during that first month, especially, the challenge is gonna change from something that you're doing into something that you now simply do. This is who you are. And that transition is what is required in order to get you to day 75. Real quick, let's talk about each one of the rules and how to approach these over the first 30 days. So let's start with the workouts because those get all of the attention. So a couple of recommendations that I have in order to get you through these. One is um, what I found myself doing was, I, when I, especially for my outside workouts, was I'd split it into three different types of workouts. I still did it all together in 45 minutes, but I'd do one thing for 15, one thing for 15, and one thing for 15. So if I was out running, I'd, I'd jog for 15, and then I would like jog backwards for 15, and then I'd do something else for 15 minutes. It helped kind of break up the monotony, and that way I still did the entire thing all together uh, for the outside workout. But also speaking of the outside workouts, you know, one of the biggest uh, uh, tips that I received whenever I was doing my first challenge was I happened to meet a guy on his 75th day and I asked him, I said, hey, what can you tell me? I think I was on day like 21 or 22 at the time. Hey, what can you tell me to help get me through the challenge like to get the most out of this? And he said that he felt like he didn't put enough into that outdoor workout. He walked every time he was outside. And so basically he was telling me that like he's finishing the challenge, yes, but he has a little bit of like an asterisk of like, he didn't do enough. He didn't do as much as he could have, and he phoned some of that stuff in. What you put into this challenge is what you're going to get out. Don't phone in those second workouts. There are going to be times you have to take it a little bit easier because 75 days is a lot of day days, and it's a lot of work on your body. It's a lot of like load on your body. But like, don't phone it in. Uh, you know, you don't want to get to that 75th day and have that other kind of split emotion of like you didn't do uh, didn't do quite enough. Also, whenever it comes to the outdoor workouts, you want to be able to make sure that you are prepared for the weather elements. If you live in a hot area. Be prepared to be outside for 45 minutes every day for the next 75 days. Same thing if it's cold. I did my first challenge in the dead of winter, so I had face masks, I had multiple gloves, I had stocking caps, I had layers of stuff. I was ready. You can't get to day four or five and go, I didn't know this was gonna happen. Be prepared. You know what's gonna happen where you live, so be ready for that. Now for the water. This is the one where most people end up screwing the pooch, for lack of better terms, with the challenge, and they get 20 days, 30 days, 40 days into it, and they find out about this specific part of the rule, which is, you can't put anything in your water. No lemon, no protein powder, no anything. No flavoring, no electrolytes, no nothing. It's gotta be straight water. You can drink that other stuff, but you can't count it towards your one gallon. So just a heads up on that. Now, what I did to make sure that I was prepared every single day was I bought myself a cheap gallon jug on Amazon and I would fill it up every night before I went to bed and put it into the fridge because I just enjoyed the cold water better. But in that way, when I woke up the next day, I was prepared. One of the biggest things where people fall apart during this challenge is the simple lack of preparation or thinking I'll deal with that when I get there. When you get there, things are already going to be hectic because of all of the other restrictions and requirements of the challenge. You don't want to assume you're going to have time to 
to do that later because you're gonna be surprised at how little time you actually have once the challenge starts. The progress picture, really only one suggestion here is to do it at the same time every day, do it in the morning and do it basically within the same room, the same light. That way, as you're looking back at all the pictures, you can uh, kind of compare them better because the lighting's the same, the room's the same, etc. Now, if you wanna weigh yourself, you can do that. It's absolutely fine. I weighed myself on the first challenge every single day, but don't be surprised if the weight doesn't go down like you expect it to do. You're putting your body through some crazy stuff that it's never been through before. Actually, after my third week, I weighed more than whenever I started. Now, at the end of the challenge, I lost a pretty decent amount of weight, but if I had judged it based off of that three-week uh, time frame, I probably would have quit if I thought that that was how things were gonna go. So just a heads up, your weight might not do what you think it's gonna do, and that's okay. Now, the reading part of this, a couple of recommendations. One is, before you start your challenge, take a day to pick out two books that you're actually going to like. One of the big mistakes that I made during my challenge was that I just used books that were here. Now, that worked out good in some cases where I found some books that I love, like The Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins, which is my second recommended book uh, if you're gonna do this challenge. It's absolutely fantastic. But you don't wanna be stuck in a situation where you're reading books that you don't even like. I, I That happened to me several times and I found myself sometimes just reading and not even absorbing because I needed to get through the challenge requirement that day of like reading 10 pages. You don't wanna be in a situation where you're just dreading reading. So doing a little bit of research ahead of time to make sure you're getting books you're actually going to like is very important. So last up is the diet. The diet is one I get a lot of questions on because it's one of the more open-ended rules and requirements of the challenge. It just basically says, you pick it and then you stick to it. So I get a lot of questions of, well, is this allowed on the challenge or is this allowed on my diet? And here's what I would say to that is, if you're not sure, just say no, it's not. Because what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna get 30 days down the road like the water people and realize you've been doing something that's actually not okay and then you're stuck having to go back to the, the first day. Most of the, th the time, whenever I get these questions of is blank allowed, it's because it's pretty obvious that that thing probably isn't, but people are trying to justify ways to make the challenge easier for themselves. If you want to, you can justify things. I was pretty good at justifying my first week of the challenge whenever I did it the first time. I was good at it, but like not good at it enough to actually be able to do what I was trying to weasel in. But like, so just stick to that rule. If you're not sure and you're asking yourself, is this allowed? Go on the side of safety and just say, no, it's not, and move on. A bunch of other things that I could get into, but I wanted to make this short and sweet and just like let you know, like, hey, like I've done this. A lot of people have done this. You can absolutely do this. And hopefully this video will help prepare you for those first few days, those first couple of weeks to get you through to week three, week four, and eventually day 75. Remember, each day that you do this, it might not feel like it, but you are getting better at doing this. And every day that you complete this, gives you a higher probability, a higher percentage of completing the entire challenge and getting to the very end. I've also got a bunch of other videos here on YouTube that you can look at. You can just type in 75 and it'll show you these. I've got my results video from the first time I went through the challenge as well as some breakdown stuff there as well. Also 75 hard versus 75 soft, which is a thing. And just because it's called 75 soft doesn't mean it's not hard. It's still pretty challenging. That's here on my channel as well. Just remember that you can absolutely do this. If this video was helpful for you, please hit the like on it, maybe the subscribe because I do these types of videos and other health and fitness videos several times a week. We'll see you on day 75. Peace out.